Piston doors are awesome, but now with the new honey blocks that have been introduced in some of the recent snapshots and the most recent snapshot adding the feature that they don't stick to slime blocks, piston doors have just got considerably, considerably cooler. In today's video, I'm going to build a bunch of interesting ones. Project number one is the big hipster door. Now for anyone who's new to the world of redstone, a hipster door is any piston door where all of the redstone is underneath the ground. So above the ground, you kind of just have the door frame and then you can surround it with glass or anything that you want, and there's no visible redstone. So I think I'm going to make this thing four blocks wide because in theory, this hipster door should be four blocks tall. And that bit there is going to be the bottom station. And then somewhere up here, we're going to have our top station. These terms may sound a little bit strange, but that's because for the first time ever, we're now able to use flying machines inside small piston doors. So in theory, all I have to do now is build up a kind of simple-ish flying machine. If we just place in these pistons here, I mean, that is, that is most of the redstone all done. And then if we just extend this up, say one, two, three, four, and then place in some iron blocks, that is going to be one strip of our piston door, which I think we can all agree is pretty nuts. And now that we have all of the other strips in place with the alternating honey blocks and slime blocks, I think we can all agree that it's even more nuts. I mean, look at this thing. Now up at the top here, I've already installed a bump stop. So this is what our door is going to be going up into. And if you imagine this right here is our door frame. So now all we have to do is we just have to power this redstone line and in theory, this door should go from being open to being closed. There we go. I mean, it's, it's really that simple. So that's a closed piston door. Now, how do we open it? With some very, very tricky placements. I definitely should have done this bit first. That's for sure. I, I definitely should have done this bit first because placing in these observers is near on impossible, but you can just about do it if you angle yourself correctly. So we just need to have observers running into those sticky pistons there and then a redstone line in front of them and then we just have to connect up these two redstone lines and i still broke it i still managed to break this thing but with a few easy fixes and one beautiful sunset this thing is now fully functional and looking absolutely awesome that has to be one of the coolest opening and closing sequences of any piston door in minecraft and it's the first one of this video. They're only going to get better from here. And I feel like it's worth mentioning, if you do want to build these things for yourselves, there is a world download down in the description. I hope. I tend to forget those things. Moving swiftly on, the slide past door, the, the vault, the, the fingers door. I don't know what to call this thing. Now, this is a concept that I actually worked on on my colored slime blocks video that I did using Seth Bling's data pack. But I'm interested to see how well it works with slime blocks and honey blocks. And flying machines. Yeah, the previous design that I used definitely did not use flying machines and it seems like a really smart way to do it. One thing that I will say is though, this thing is going to be absolutely huge because I mean, we have to have this system down at the bottom, but then we also have the exact same system up at the top. It's probably going to be one of the biggest four by four doors ever created. And I'm glad. Oh gosh, this is a problem. Uh, I've sent, I've sent my things into space. I've, I, I've began to send my, uh, my door into space. After retrieving my door modules and returning them back into their proper locations, this is what the final design looks like. It is incredibly tall, pretty slim. Okay, it's quite a slender thing, but it's, yeah, it's, it's very, very big. As I say, I wouldn't really expect people to be building these in their bases, but I think we can all agree that the opening and closing sequence is something quite special. I mean, look at that in perfect synchronization. It is beautiful. Now, I said it during my colored slime blocks video, but I'll say it again. This does not feel like the sort of thing that should be possible in vanilla Minecraft. It has me so excited that we can build this sort of stuff. I could honestly open and close this thing all day. You know what? I forgive the fact that it's about 9,000 feet tall. I, I forgive it because it looks absolutely fantastic. All right, so I'd say we've built two very cool four high piston doors there. But what if we wanted to go five high? Now in the past, this would have made things exponentially more difficult because then you have to have triple piston extenders involved. You have to have block swapping things going on, block storage, all that stuff it all becomes a bit of a nightmare. Whereas when you're using flying machines and when you're using different colored slime blocks, I mean, it makes things a little bit more difficult, but nothing too crazy. I mean, look at this thing. 
This is this is all of the redstone wiring that is going to take us from the bottom to the top. And this this is why coloured slime blocks are such a big deal because you can build flying machines like this. Look at it. Look at it. Things just sliding past one another, flying upwards. It's mega. And how do we get it down, I hear you ask? Well, unlike the hipster door that we had earlier where we had both pistons down at the bottom, this has got a piston up at the top. So all we have to do is send a signal through the top piston and it will send it down. Now this of course means that we can't really refer to this five high version as a hipster door because there's going to be some redstone happening above the door, but as you'll see with the final design, it shouldn't be too much, so it will end up looking really cool anyway. See, I told you, I mean, it looks almost magical to be honest with you. We hit the button, everything opens up. The only thing that we have to do now is we need to put in some redstone that allows us to close it from this button. Obviously we could have two buttons, one button in the floor, that does the closing but that is that's a very 2012 solution that's the sort of thing that i used to do right back at the start of my youtube channel and it's clunky nobody likes it and i think i've got a smart way to do it just give me a couple of seconds and then i'll explain up at the top here we've got an observer that's running out from these droppers right here it runs into this piston which is going to push all of these blocks downwards now when they get pushed downwards this observer is then going to fire into this block powering this redstone line very quickly but also powering this piston pushing this line of blocks back upwards but it should give a pulse long enough for our flying machine to detect it and actually begin the closing sequence without any visible redstone once again so there's nothing going on yet we're sending signals through the walls that is absolutely flawless if i do say so myself i'm a huge 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 fan of this thing I think this might be cooler than any of the doors I've shown so far. And this is only the third one. They're still getting better from here. And they're also going to be getting bigger. A lot, a lot bigger. Let's see how big we can go. All right, I'm not necessarily going to do that, but I do have this idea of how we could create something that could allow us to go absolutely enormous. And I think, I mean, it should be a really, really simple process. It's kind of this idea of stackable modules. So if we just do something like this, when that moves, that will push upwards, okay? So then if we just have another module here with something like this, and then have this, we can almost do it like bricks, you know? So we have bricks of a system. Now, if we quickly cause an update to this one, okay, that pushes up, and then this one, that pushes up, and then if we push this one up from the bottom, I'm assuming all of these should move. So if we just grab ourselves a redstone block. There it is. I did want to talk about that some more, but then I had an enormous sneeze. But this, of course, is extremely exciting because when they travel upwards, they'll be in this brick form and they'll travel up kind of in separate modules like this. But then when they crash into something immovable, they will then create a solid wall. And then when we want to open it up, all we have to do is send our flying machine downwards and all of the bricks will just travel down into the floor. And then they'll create this structure again. The only thing that we have to do to get this thing to open properly is we have to update down the line of the flying machine so that the modules get separation before it starts working. My goodness, that made it sound a lot more complicated. I both love it and hate it when that happens. I love it because it makes me sound smart. I hate it because it means that nobody understands what I'm talking about. All it means is I have to send a redstone signal to this piston, then I have to send a redstone signal to this piston, then this one, then this one, and then this one to activate the flying machine. And I've done that, just making use of observers. And it actually works. Oh my goodness, it actually works. And there is our door closed. And then if we update this piston right here, so we'll have a redstone line there. There is our door opening. This is going to be a huge hipster door. 
Oh my goodness! Honey blocks are the best blocks in the game. This is nuts. This is totally nuts. Now we know what you're thinking. Right now it doesn't look that impressive because it's only one block wide, but I am in the process of expanding it out to be 14 blocks wide. It is worth mentioning that all of the piston doors that I've done so far in this video are expandable horizontally as far as you like. You can, you can build them as far as you like, within reason. I mean, going a thousand blocks, you're gonna have to start getting chunk loaders in place and it's gonna be quite complicated. This is already starting to look totally bonkers. I'm just placing in the activation circuitry. And man, there is something always very cool and industrial looking about loads and loads of observers. Just in lines like this with their arrows pointing around. Crazy. But what is very interesting about these doors is that although they're big, they're not actually that difficult to build. Unlike other large piston doors, or even 4x4 piston doors and things like that, with loads of circuitry involved, you have to do a lot of thinking, whereas all of these are just repetitive patterns. Once you've built this one layer, this one strip, then you know how to build it. All you have to do is just place the things next to it and make sure that you don't place slime next to slime and you don't place honey next to honey because that will end in a bad day. No bad days, but a surprisingly long amount of time later, here we are. The door frame is in place. Everything is ready to go. The redstone has been constructed. This is an exciting moment. If we hit this button right here. Look at that. So there is our door closing and everything is in place. This is a full blown hipster door. There's no redstone above ground level. There is the door closed and then the opening. It's just, it's mad. It's totally mad. Now don't get me wrong, it's nowhere near as beautiful on the opening and closing as some of the other doors featured in this video. But what it loses in elegance and style, it makes up for in just sheer scale. This is absolutely enormous and absolutely fantastic. And the best thing is, is that it can be expanded in that direction. And also it can be expanded vertically because these modules, you just stack them on top of one another. Look, they're just repeating patterns. So you could have a 100 by 100 piston door if you wanted to, and it will be exactly the, t the same to build as this one. You just have to do more of it. Honey blocks, honey blocks and slime blocks. What a time to be alive. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video going over all of these piston doors and things. As you can see, now that I'm next to it, that gives a real sense of scale as to how silly this piston door is. I mean, I look so tiny next to it. It's almost comical. So on that point, I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you again in the next video. I can't wait to do more honey block stuff. I, it's all I'm thinking about. Okay, that's not quite true. There is there is one other thing that I'm thinking about. When am I going to get better? I've been I've been snotty and, and, and throat hurty and headachey for like the past two and a half weeks. I don't know what's going on with me. My body is letting me down. I want to use honey blocks healthy. 